It's time for a cup of coffee with Will and Chris at Slumberland Furniture. From Slumberland Furniture in Osage Beach, here are your hosts, William Holtz and Chris Schneider. Here we go with another weekly edition of Cup of Coffee right here from Slumberland at the Lake. I'm Wild Will. I'm Uncle Chris. And another week with a lot of Osage Beach headlines in it. First, a uh, small update on Nip Nichols development. Plus, you've heard about the new Anglers Outpost. Oh, man, that looks really cool. This is going to be massive development designed by, built by, and four fishermen coming to Lake of the Ozarks. Pretty cool. Also in Osage Beach, the sewer and water rates announced as far as what that increase is going to look like. And it's not small. Plus, new uh, Osage Beach staff member hired from KRMS, KRMS TV, new director that we're real familiar with. And plus, we look back at the Osage Beach Food Truck Festival over the weekend. And hard to believe, a couple of things. Hello Profile, looks yeah. like you got one right there. Yeah, right uh, there. Mm. Celebrates 100 issues, hard, hard to believe that. And also, um, we had something wild going on. I'm not gonna try to say it, it's Northern Lights. Chris is gonna tell us what the it's actually Aurora called. Borealis. Right? There, exactly like I would have said it. That and uh, a whole lot more, just about a week and a half, two weeks away from Shootout Offshore. We'll get you ready for that and a whole lot more. But first and foremost, it's the greatest time of the year to start thinking about your outdoor patio furniture. They got tons here and the Memorial Day sales events, the perfect time to take advantage of that. To tell us more, our friends at Slumberland at the Lake. Hey everybody, Daryl Cunningham with Slumberland Furniture at the Lake. What time of year is it? Well, Memorial Weekend's just right around the corner and you probably have a big group coming to the lake. What do you need? Probably a sectional. And boy, do we have sectionals. With the Memorial Sale, they're up to 60% off. We have 0% interest financing for up to 36 months on top of the already great discounted prices. And don't forget, we deliver the entire lake area. So come check us out at Slumberland Furniture where we're bringing happy home. All right, so as we welcome you back, uh, I noticed how much different it looks this week inside Slumberland. Last week, there were all kinds of stuff shoved towards the door, ready to get delivered. Well, the delivery crew has been busy yep. delivering all these great deals across the area uh, for the Memorial Day sales event. Thanks for watching Cup of Coffee with Wild Will and Uncle Chris from Slumberland Furniture. And while you're watching it this short, you can see the whole episode of every week's Cup of Coffee by going to our YouTube page. Make sure that you subscribe and like this video and make sure you hit the bell down below so you get notified every time we put new content right here on the Lake TV YouTube page. And it's cool seeing all the new decor and, and things they've got here, but I wanted to give a congratulations to the Slumberland at the Lake staff for the month of April. This store right here out of all Slumberland stores, uh, in the country, and that's corporate and that's uh, franchise stores, over 130 stores, this one the number one store uh, in the amount of sales. That has a lot to do with the crazy deals, but it has a lot to do with you guys coming in and supporting the crew right here at Slumberland at the Lake. So congratulations to Daryl, to Jill, to Amos, their incredible staff. And uh, while we're talking about them, they are looking right now for a new delivery driver. Wow. Uh, and the cool thing is if you don't have your uh, Class C license or your CDL, the required license, to drive with them, they'll actually uh, help you get trained, they'll reimburse you for that, and the uh, benefits, you have paid time off, you have a retirement, you have 401k, you've got insurance. So there's all kinds of great benefits, Com competitive pay, flexible scheduling. And so Slumberland at the Lake, looking for a new delivery driver. And as I told you, they stay busy. One of the top Slumberland stores in the entire United States. So stop by and see Daryl right here in store because if you're looking for something new or you're, you drive right now, this is a great forever career. Come join the Slumberland at the Lake family where they value what's important to you and that's family. Yeah, and every Christmas, they're out there delivering free beds oh, yeah. uh, to kids who don't have beds and stuff like that. So really cool, really good organization. Throughout the year as well, always ready for those calls from local schools, shelters, pregnancy help centers, and there's a need. Joe Ray, Daryl Cuttingham, Slumberland at the Lake, they meet that need time and time again. So as we move into this week's show, local headlines, I didn't tease it in the intro, but uh, we've been following it, uh, the Michael Hutzler case, you know, the former Camden County detective who was a special assistant to the former prosecutor, Caleb Cunningham. Mm -hmm. uh, he was charged with two uh, felony counts of tampering in a witness with a witness in a felony prosecution. Now, these charges filed on the 7th of November from 2000 
23. And that initial complaint was filed by Camden County Prosecutor uh, Rochelle Grosner. And that was November 7th, had to be redacted, restated, or refiled on the 8th. So the first court debt date was set, his preliminary hearing, for December 4th. Yeah. That got moved. Now, Honorary Judge Steve Jackson, Honorable Judge Steve Jackson from McLeod County was overseeing this case in Camden County, and that got moved to March, and then again got moved to May 6th with Honorary Judge Jackson saying, absolutely no more continuances, absolutely no more delays. May 6th, that's the final date, which would have been last Monday, right? Well, right. come Monday, May 6th, the case has been nullified. It's a closed record, and if you go to CaseNet, nothing can be found. We previously had these filings, um, and it looks like we're going to have to file a sunshine request to unseal or find out the terms of this. But I'm wondering, how does this happen? Two felony counts of tampering with a witness in a felony prosecution, and that's from November of 2023. And here we are nearly 17 months later, three continuances on the preliminary hearing, no mugshot, no fingerprints, and still nothing. And it doesn't look like there will be anything because everything seems to be dropped or the case has been nullified. Um, so kind of crazy, right? Very crazy. Just kind of dropping out of view like that. I mean, it's something happened behind the scenes in some way. I'm, I'm guessing it's uh, kind of crazy. Is it, It's kind of sad though, right? I mean, it seemed to be a, an open and shut case sure. uh, with a witness and everything like that. And then it just kind of goes away. So so does the guy get off scot-free? Are there still consequences? See, that's the question I, I have at this point in time. Does Michael Hutzler get off scot-free? Well, now we do know it looks like he won't face the humiliation of a mugshot or any more public hearings or things of that nature. But probably more important and the overlying issue is here is what's the in-game goal? And so my question is, does Michael Hutzler still have a peace commission license? Does he have the option to go abuse his power in another municipality? And because that's what would ultimately be a travesty is I'd give the humiliation of a photo and fingerprints and all that stuff that comes with it because people feel like this guy has wronged people in this community. They want to see, I wouldn't say retaliation, but they want to see justice. They want to see him also pay the price that he's caused others to pay. And so it doesn't look like this is going to happen. And I guarantee you, this is not going to be popular for Prosecutor Rochelle Grosner. But I'm curious and I want to find out how we can find out more details from this. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it looks like the case has been nullified, as I alluded to. And it looks like I'm going to have to sunshine request the county. I want to go about finding out how can we get that case? How can we get that nullified case and find out the details? Because there's got to be something in there. There's typically some kind of prosecution agreement or special terms that would allow this to happen and allow it to be sealed. And so we're going to roll up our sleeves and try to figure out exactly the details surrounding why uh, former detective Michael Hutzler's court date of May 6th, the third continuance under honorary judge Steve Jackson was nullified and dropped. And what was he accused of? What, what did he supposedly do? Felony tampering in a witness uh, prosecution, and it was a felony witness prosecution. So remember the intimidation over the insurance and don't go through the county. That happened at Shady Gators about uh, two years ago. And it was a private company with Central Missouri Security, his company. Uh, you remember the initial story we did on I that? You kind of remember that. Yeah. So the victim in that case, uh, there had been intimidation tactics played and then he had tried to lure her into insurance fraud. You remember the complaint in the uh, affidavit that we had shared and we still have those documents just because we've saved those, but those are unavailable now and pulled from court record, public record. So you wouldn't be able to see those if we didn't have those archived. And that initial uh, complaint, well, like I said, was filed on the 7th of November by newly elected prosecutor, Rochelle Grosner, um, and now the one who's still the prosecutor and has seen this case now in her office uh, be nullified. So we'll find out more. We'll press prosecutor Grosner's office to find out how this happens and hope that there is something sealed or there is something behind the scenes here that is better than what it appears, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so another, we've talked about Osage Beach a lot over the last couple of years, mostly the Nichols developments, right? The apartments at Sycamore Creek. We've had delinquencies. We reached out, heard from contractors. We talked with Thomas Construction uh, and Chad Nugent last week. We told you about that. And so uh, reaching out and saying, hey, do we have any updates? And speaking to both Thomas Construction and speaking to contractors who have 
been delinquent, not gotten paid in full, who are still not paid in full, uh, but they said, hey, we had positive movement Friday with an additional communication on bank funding. Owner was on site communicating and uh, great communications between the contractors and the bank, and they're incredibly optimistic that even if the bank financing doesn't kick in, uh, that developer Tegethoff is making moves to bring in more of his own financing to help get them caught up. Um, and speaking to another contractor, they mimic the same message saying the plan is for us to get another draw this week, which by the time you're watching would have been Monday or Tuesday, and they feel good about this or as good as they have in recent time. And so there is movement. Um, they are getting some payments and we're going to continue to ask, continue to look, continue to push and hope that everyone gets paid in full. And again, this project comes to fruition because at the end of the day, that's truly what's going to be best for everybody in the area is if both the apartments at Sycamore Creek off of Nichols come to fruition, as well as Oasis at Lakeport, the amusement park and Marriott Hotel, that comes to fruition. That's what's in the best interest of everybody. Not a year in uh, holdout, not uh, liens maturing, not delinquency sitting out there and contractors not getting paid and developers looking terrible, whether they should or shouldn't. And no one wins with all that, right? The only way everybody wins in, in this situation is if both projects come to fruition and everybody gets paid. And these are good gigs for our local contractors. Uh, these are really lucrative gigs, right? These are great. If you're a contractor, you're in concrete, you're in plumbing, you're in HVAC, you're a general contractor. These are the kind of gigs you want, right? Absolutely. A lot and of so money to be made. They want these to come to fruition as they should. Now, I think it's worth mentioning because we have not done a great job of hammering this home. We have been hard on the city of Osage Beach, and in my opinion, rightfully so. We've yet to get a response from the city of Osage Beach. But it is worth noting that the way they wrote this chapter abatement and these things on the Oasis at Lakeport, and I believe at Nichols, uh, apartments is none of the rebates, rebates, none of the kickbacks, none of the reimbursements are going to come until the fruition, the project comes to complete fruition. Meaning if it does go belly up, if people don't get paid, the city's out nothing. They're never going to have to pay the reimbursement, the sales tax, the things of that nature. And that's as far as I understand it. That is not law or hundred percent fact, but that is as far as I understand. And we did ask, uh, we left an open invitation for anybody at the city of Osage to come on the show this week and, and update the situation. If we're getting something wrong to uh, let us know what's wrong, tell us what's right. Uh, and you didn't hear back from anybody at the city on that. Not not yet. And I, I included everyone from Gina Woods and, and all the board of aldermen and, and Mayor Harmison just to reach out and say, hey, uh, I saw Mayor Harmison's you know message after Thursday's board of aldermen meeting and I wanted everyone to know he didn't list us by name, but he was addressing you and I on Cup of Coffee. And here's the initial story we did. Here's the follow-up story. And I you know, want you guys to know we're not out against you. We love the city of Osage Beach. We love the area. More than anything, we felt like this could set a bad precedent for things in the future. And so we've tried to be a voice for the contractors that can't be a voice for themselves. But please understand, I went on to say in my email that even though our angles or our stances may not always be the same, I urge you that our passion to do what's best and right for the city of Osage Beach for today, for tomorrow, and for years to come remain intact because that's what I want. And with that being said, I invite anyone to come on and, and have this discussion. Let's get this out in the open and let's figure out where it went wrong. But I didn't want people to believe based on us not getting listed in some of the ways. I mean, things can get taken out of context, right? As we've seen in many cases. And so we did reach out to the city of Osage Beach. Uh, we said, look, we're, we're not working against you guys. We'd love to talk with you. And so that is still an open invitation should anybody, one of our aldermen, whether uh, Cole Bradbury, the city's attorney, whether Mayor Harmison, Phyllis Morose, Alderman Ross, any of the aldermen want to come on. We'd love to have a conversation with you. Uh, and it won't be a gotcha piece. You know, it won't be a gotcha. No. Like, we want to have open conversations. Well, and we know, I mean, we make mistakes. Sometimes we get it wrong. You know, maybe maybe we've got the wrong information or we, we're not seeing it right. So we invite them to come on, tell us if we're wrong, tell us where we're wrong, what is right, what's the truth, all that stuff. I mean, we're not here to, you know, try to prove that we're right all the time. We're here to see what's going on and let everybody know what's going on and uh, kind of keep the community informed. So if we're wrong, we're inviting you from the city to come on and tell us where we're wrong. You sure. Know, so. sure. And, and speaking of, they're, they're busy at this city of Osage Beach. We look at Angler's Outpost Development at Public Beach 2. Uh, this is going to be great, a new nine-acre 
development just uh, right there next to PB Launch to $7 million. And when we say uh, Angler's Outpost, this is kind of the first of its kind for this area. And, and to me, it's brilliant. So what are we talking about with these units here? Yeah, Chris? this is so cool. I've always said, I, I've, I've thought that uh, Bass Pro should put in, you know, a place here at the Lake of the Ozarks. I think it would be a huge thing, you know, and I think uh, that's kind of what Angler's Outpost is doing. So the first phase of the project calls for the development of 24 suites uh, and 48 sleeping rooms in four huge buildings, right? I mean, it's like a fishing camp, but it's a really, really nice fishing camp. Each suite includes uh, 60 by 12 garage space where the entire truck and boat combo, because the pickups are pulling the boat, right, and the trailer. So it's big enough that the, the both the truck and the, the uh, trailer and boat can be parked inside with charging outlets and protection from weather and theft. Uh, the quote is, all the suites are spacious with two bedrooms, two baths, a full kitchenette, and all the needs are met with the anglers and the team or co-angler. Uh, the investor group, Patriots Equity Partners, is a Missouri-based company, so that's good. In addition to the 24 garages and suites, the campus plans to have a great clubhouse with a golf simulator, arcade, table games, lounge area, barbecue grills, fire pits, and a great outdoor social area. They say it's like having a nine acre man cave property. Yeah. How cool is this, I man? Mean, as a, I got fired up when I saw, I can tell you're <laughs> fired up about this and I don't even really fish, but this is a dream because competitive fishing tournaments are massive yeah. here at Lake of the Ozarks. Uh, there are hundreds of tournaments currently scheduled for 2024 alone. And this gives you an opportunity to, like you said, have the premier experience when you come down for a fishing tournament. I mean, there's not enough resorts and hotels. You're always trying to find Airbnbs. There's thousands and thousands of fishermen that come down for these events from out of the area. And so look, now here's a place that you and a buddy, you get your boat, your truck, you guys stay, two bedrooms, like kitchen. perfect, net. man. Yeah. I mean, it's so unique, first of its kind. And uh, they said too, which I, I thought was cool, is that when we don't have fishing tournaments going on, we look forward to serving boating families for company retreats and client adventures. Our campus is perfect for large groups looking for a unique, fun place to stay, said Sri Madala, the managing partner with Patriots Equity Partners. But uh, how cool is this? It's going to be right next to, uh, lo located next to Dollar General yeah. with quick and easy access off 54 and the KK exit. Uh, they picked a great location. It's close to PB2's public ramp, and it should not uh, affect the traffic coming off. It will impact the interchange in a positive way, they said, uh, which is interesting that it's not gonna impact it except for in a positive way, mm -hmm. uh, but it's gonna be a great addition uh, addition to Lake of the Ozarks added Mayor Harmison. Yeah. And they've already started clearing uh, the area. They're busy already. And again, and I wanna throw out a kudos to Mayor Harmison. You know, I mean, he when he took office, he said, we're gonna make Osage Beach great again. And he's been working hard at doing that, whether, it's the Nichols development and there's been issues there, but it, it is a development that seems to be positive. Same thing with the Oasis theme park. Here's another thing in uh, Osage Beach that seems to be happening. So uh, the city busy, Mayor Harmison busy. I think this will be a great thing for the community. I think it's gonna be fantastic. And again, maybe it'll wake Bass Pro up and say, hey, get your butts down here. I mean, this is, this is like one of the premier places in the country for fishermen yeah. and boaters and whatnot. Ba Bass Pro can stay where they're at. I want Angler's Outpost. There you and go. I'm glad they're coming. I'm glad they're investing in Lake of the Ozarks. And so that's who we're tying our- uh, Who's the big guy at Bass Pro? What's his name? Johnny, Johnny Morris. Morris. He apparently doesn't like Lake of the Ozarks, right? Well, allegedly he's uh, loyal to Table Rock Lake. And so that's where he uh, kind of stays, but he's got properties all over. He's got venues all over. Uh, America. So yeah. Anyway, I I don't You're care missing about Bass, out, Johnny. I don't care about Bass Pro Shop when you got Angler's <laughs> Outpost, baby. Yeah. That's that's what I'm talking about. All right. So listen. Also in Osage Beach, they've been busy. They've been busy getting ready to raise your sewer and water oh, rates. Wow. And I'm not just talking about slightly. These are massive updates. Before we tell you about those, mark your calendars for June 20th yep. because they're having their public hearing at the city of Osage Beach, where they'll hear from you before making their final decision before it goes in front of the board for approval. And we tell you about these increases, this is why you might want to attend. Yes, indeed. And again, that meeting is June 20th 
at 5.30, a Board of Aldermen meeting at City Hall. So the way I read it, it looks like the increase that is coming for water and sewer is gonna be in two phases. It'll go up in both phases. One is in August, it looks like August uh, 1st of 2024. And just to give you an idea of how much the rates are gonna go up. So for the simple billing residential in-city, five-eighth meter, it's uh, current, the current uh, bill would be, is like 5637, and that is gonna go up to 6602. That will be $115.80 uh, yearly raise in what you're gonna pay for um, water and sewer there. That's just one of the areas. And that's just in August. And then there's another increase coming in February of 25. And again, so if you're paying a monthly bill of 6602, that is going to go up next February from 6602 to 7521 for each billing period. And that would be an extra, another extra $110.28 for the year. So if you add the two things together, it's like 225 increase for the whole year. Uh, and that's just averaging one of their billing areas. That was for the uh, simple billing residential in city five eighth meter. So uh, those are some big increases. Now I say that I don't, I don't think they're trying to take advantage of the population, I think this is a necessary thing. I mean, you've got to have water and sewer. You got to update the systems. You got to keep that going. And unfortunately, it's not cheap and it's not easy. Yeah, you're uh, you're not kidding. It's substantial increases. But they went on to say in their press release some of the reasons and how long it had been, as well as the increase of 6% growth in both the water and sewer systems. Uh, and it was a system that was built in the early 2000s and currently serves 61 100 users, uh, which is about a thousand more users yeah. than it had. And so they've, they've got an increase. And so we'll see how the city, uh, the citizens handle this. Yeah. But listen, if you want to have your voice heard, I don't know if you're going to be able to do anything about it. This is a needed change as far as they've got to get funds raised somehow. Yeah. I mean, to upgrade this system. But you could come to that public hearing again on June 20th at City Hall at 530 yeah. at the City of Osage Beach. And, there, and there's two separate issues here. There's water, which is one thing, and then there's sewer, which is another thing. And as you mentioned, the water system was updated around 2000. But the sewer system was built in the 1980s. So that's oh, yeah. 45 years old uh, and um, currently serves 7,100 users, the sewer system. It includes over 1,200 grinder pumps. Don't want to get into that. Uh, 59 sewer lift stations because they have to send that, you know, they have to pump it somewhere. Uh, the sewer flows from their systems users uh, equated to over 352 million gallons in 2023. So it's a big system, you yeah. know, for a small town, there, there's a whole lot that goes into that. Not cheap, not easy. And it hasn't been updated apparently in 45 years. Well, and here's the alternative. If you don't want the increase, you could just let it build up at your house. Eey, you that's know? not good. What a, what a commodity, you know, the sewer system and the toilet system we, we have now is like, man, what do they do before that? Right. You know, and that's one of the things I love about living at the lake though, uh, is I love having um, a toilet, a well where I get to pump my own water. I don't have to rely on sure. the city for my yeah. water. And I've got, uh, you know, a septic system. You know, I don't need city sewer. So I love that part of living at the lake. You're not tied in, you know, where you have to pay that because, I mean, if you're in the city, uh, you got to use that stuff, right? I mean, yeah. either that or go build an outhouse out back. I don't know the, if they'll let you do that, though. All right. So as we move forward, also with Osage Beach, they're making a new hire. They're bringing on a communication specialist who will be working primarily with social media and the website. Former KRMS TV producer Matt Markovy joins the Osage Beach uh, City ranks. He's like your twin brother, right? You guys look exactly alike. Uh, you're the second person that I've heard say that. Only the second. The first was Matt Markovy himself. So you and him both uh, live in that la la world, but I don't. I don't see it. Only uh, to be so pretty. Yeah. Uh, I I don't see it. So congrats to uh, Markovy and replacing him with KRMS TV as the operations manager. Former 
uh, Lake TV founder, owner, and uh, current Lake TV sideline videographer, camera operator, Sean Kober, who has extensive experience in media videography here at the lake. So congrats to Sean and uh, good luck to him and KRMS TV. And of course, Matt Markovy with the city of Osage Beach. Yeah, I think that's a really smart thing for the city to do. I mean, social media has become such a big thing. Uh, it's probably really smart to hire your own people to try to make you look as good as possible all the time on social media. Uh, that's kind of the world we live in today. So probably a smart move uh, by the city. And we'll obviously, it's part of our job is to monitor all that. And if sure. we need to call BS on anything, we will, right? You know, and- Well, I thought the article from KRMS was awful sweet. <laughs> the uh, the our, our loss is, is their gain. So it could be a direct uh, relationship with KRMS and the city of Osage Beach where they're able to get their news and information out exactly how they want it gotten out and painted in such a picture. But we can tell you this, we won't be working for the city of Osage Beach. They won't be hiring away any of our people as far as we know. And we'll, we'll certainly continue to cover them as we see uh, fit and what's right and what's truthful. And we will say I had a great time Saturday at the uh, Lake Ozark uh, Spring Food Truck Festival. Wow, it was packed. So many vendors. I didn't realize you could fit that many people on that far end of the city park. I it was know, unreal. I don't know how you stay so skinny because you're always at those events. You're trying all the food. I don't know if I'm trying man. all the food. Uh, those the shorts you're wearing today are kind of tight. You need to stand up and let the people see your shorts. <laughs> I got to get some sun on my legs. So uh, Uncle Chris has, has been really excited about the length of my shorts the last couple of weeks. And so, yeah, this week I went a step further. I'm not wearing any shorts, okay? So you you can't lay off the shorts. You tell everybody that comes it's around. It's like the that, 1970s NBA shorts, right? You know, short shorts. It's not pretty. I still... <laughs> You're not, you're not right. The food truck festival was awesome. They had the uh, inflatables there for the kids. You got to buy an all day band for 10 bucks. The kids absolutely loved it. And I'd say there was probably, I, I reached out to find out uh, the amount of food trucks because I didn't count them, but I'd say there were 60, 65 food trucks. Wow. There was uh, hundreds and hundreds of attendees. I would not be surprised if there were well over a thousand uh, people there at any given time, but great crowd. There were a ton of vendor booths, some great food, and we saw a lot of uh, friends out there. So it made for a great day. And I wanted to say they do that Lotto Food Truck Festival twice a year, once in the spring and once in the fall. I believe that's in September uh, each fall as well, middle of September. So stay tuned to Lake TV and we'll keep you posted on that as well. All right, so as we move ahead, Two weeks away, shootout offshore. Stay tuned to Lake TV's Community Spotlight Show. You'll see guest uh, last week or aired right now, I believe. And then in the coming weeks, there's so much happening this year around shootout offshore. Yeah. Just real quick, they've got a boat parade and street party. They've got testing on Friday, two days of racing and Saturday as well. And they've packed some other great events into that. That's going to be a big one. But listen, the 29th Wednesday, that's just two weeks away from Wednesday. By the time you see this, it could be less. That's that boat parade and street party on the Bagnell Dam Strip. That's going to get you kicked off for the shootout offshore, formerly known as Lake Race, but this is part of the five uh, P1 Offshores Championship Racing Series. Mm -hmm. This is their second on the circuit. Their first is this weekend in Cocoa Beach, which is going to be exciting. And you can watch the racing right here on Lake TV, both Friday and Saturday for the shootout offshore. So tune into Lake TV, both that Friday and Saturday, May 31st and June 1st to see the racing. It's gonna be pretty cool. One to five on Friday and nine to five on Saturday. All right, big shout out, Missy Martin at Pinkle with LO Profile. Mm -hmm. uh, we attended the launch social at the rooftop uh, at Lodge of Fort Seasons. Great event, that was actually issue number 101. Uh, was a really great issue, but wanted to congratulate Missy and her staff on 100 issues. They've always operated with a really small budget, putting out such a classy, elegant, production, publication. They've won so many awards, but what amazes me is the amount that Missy gives back to the community, the amount that she highlights and tells people's story. And she does so without compromising on putting too much advertising. That's one thing I've always loved about LO Profile. It is mostly stories, mostly content. And if it is ads, it's very elegant. And so I just wanted to congratulate someone who runs a great business with class, integrity, against all odds, and has reached new heights at, at number 100 prepping for their HK's golf tournament, one of the big things she does. So just shout out to my friend, Missy. Also, before we go, let's look at this great site. I call it Northern Lights, you call it? 
Aurora Borealis. So we had that Friday and look at the time lapse Andrew captured. Just get a look here. You see, unbelievable. Kind of turned out to be a great weekend here at Lake of the Ozarks. Don't miss Kelly Miller on the Lake TV Community Spotlight Show this week. Of course, watch Happy Hour Weekend at the Lake. And don't miss June 1st, the monthly market update, that and a whole lot more. But for us from Slumberland at the Lake, that's going to do it. Yeah.